Hello and welcome to another vlog. This is another installment in my dragon vlog series. So about a month ago, I think, I put out this video that asked you guys to comment down below and tell me which of these 15 dragon books I should read. And the winning books were going to be read in a vlog, which is this vlog. I picked three of them and I do plan on doing another follow-up just like I did last time where I pick the ones that I would pick. Although one of these was one that I would have picked for myself. In first place, we did have Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynne, which is a adult epic high fantasy story and I have no idea what it's about. I know that there was, it's called the Bloodsworn Saga. I know that there's gods that used to be at war and now aren't. And that's like all I know. I also know that the dragon doesn't come into it into like one scene at the end. So a lot of people wouldn't classify this as a dragon book, but for the purposes of this vlog series and the TBR video, I did count it. So we'll be reading this, which I am excited for. In second place, we had an indie, which is Ascendant by Michael R. Miller. I have previously read a book from this author there. It was actually for the last dragon vlog I did and I didn't enjoy it, but this one was the book that had actually been calling my name by the author. I'm more excited for this one than I was for his last one. This follows Holt Cook who, when he realizes that dragons don't like weakness in their kind and they kill off any kind that they see that they deem has a weakness, he goes and he saves one of these dragon eggs and then he ends up bonding to a blind dragon. Just sounds interesting. I'm excited for it. And then the last one that won is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. At the time of making my TBR video, I had never seen this anywhere. And I feel like I dug deep in order to find it. But at the time of filming this video, this book is everywhere, like literally everywhere. It's getting so much hype, so I'm very excited to read it. This follows our main character who is thrown into the dragon school. So this is a school for dragon riders. The only way to get out of this school is to either become bonded to a dragon, succeed, also look at the lighting change, to succeed, become bonded to a dragon, or to die. There's no other way out. Our main character has been training as a scribe for her entire life and her mother is now forcing her in to the academy because she thinks that her children should all take after her and be the strongest military flying people, you know, all that good stuff. This is, I think it's why a new adult fantasy romance. So I wasn't expecting this one to win, but this is one of the books I would have chosen for myself. I'm very excited to get to this one. So there we have it. There are the three books. If I'm predicting, I'm gonna say Shadow of the Gods is going to be my favorite. Just knowing John Gwynn and the type of stories he writes, I'm hoping that this one will do it for me. I think in second place, I'm going to put Fourth Wing, I think. I think. And then in third place, I'm going to put Ascendant, but I'm hoping that this is the most successful vlog yet. These two probably could be switched. Um, a fantasy romance could be a wild card for me and the boy and his dragon trope is also something I don't tend to love but like I'm hoping to love this one so that's why they're sitting in like this order anyways if you want to figure out how this all ends you are going to have to keep on watching good morning and welcome to the vlog I've already done the intro but I'm filming this first so it feels weird and I want to introduce you to the vlog but like I know I've already done that but like future Cassidy has done that. I started Ascendant. Ascendant is a story that revolves around our main character Holt Cook who is just training to be a chef like his father in this kingdom but one day he kind of decides that he doesn't want to cook today and he ends up going to look at the choosing ceremony which is when the dragons choose their like companions. He ends up learning a little bit more about dragons and he learns that if a dragon egg shows imperfections, if they know a dragon is going to be different, gonna have some kind of like disability, then they get rid of that egg and that dragons don't like weakness in their kin. He ends up feeling like this isn't the right thing to do and he goes to save this dragon which ends up with him being bonded to a dragon and this dragon is born blind and it, it starts from there. I actually do have a clip of me reading this last night because I'm quite far in already and I could not put it down last night so I'll show you that clip now. I probably don't even want to know what I look like. I need to stop reading late at night so that you guys get ow. <laughs> I need to stop reading late at night so that um, you're not just stuck with me with flash and bright lights but I am 20% into Ascendant currently and I'm loving it. 
I typically don't like a boy and his dragon story. I've learned that. But this is so much better to me than any of the other ones I've read. But I'm loving the setup. I love the main character. I'm loving the personalities of the dragons. I love the, like, companionship that's happening. I like the idea of, like, food and, like, dragons having, like, this personality where they want their food cooked properly. And I just, I'm really enjoying this. I love the audiobook, too. I think the audiobook narrator does a wonderful job and it feels like I'm being told the story and it feels very immersive. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying this so far. You obviously in that clip can see my excitement for this. I'm really enjoying this story. I do have a tab here for when he finds out about the dragon and I thought it was just beautiful writing. Um, when he's told to just like get rid of the egg, the one guy tells him to put it out of his mind. This is the way things are. And he goes, that's all anyone ever says. And I just feel like within that line, it kind of shows human nature and how like we just like go with the flow and um, don't really think like, about things like if it's done that way it's done that way and I, I don't know I, I thought that like sentence itself was just very beautiful in like a simple way of getting the message across and I feel like that's kind of how I would describe this writing he is simple at getting messages across and it really is working for me I highly recommend the audiobook I've been enjoying the audiobook I actually read the first chapter of this a while ago for a try a chapter predicting video and I didn't like my experience with the writing style as much in that but I ended up getting the audiobook and since getting the audiobook I am obsessed with the writing style so I do think it's really interesting how it could have just been my mood that day that the audiobook wasn't that the narrative style wasn't working for me or it could be that the audiobook is just so good that it's made me really enjoy this like storyteller flow narrative style and I don't know I'm really enjoying this I feel like it's Aragon but I feel like it's kind of a re-inspiring of Aragon Aragon. Like, it is definitely inspired by the classic story of a boy and his dragon, which Aragon is not the first to do it, but I feel like Aragon is, like, the biggest in my head. And it's it's definitely a retelling, but it's it's um, reimagined. Like, it's bigger, and it has more nuance, and it is more of a modern take with, like, the disability rep and all of that in it. I'm really, really enjoying this so far. I am about 150 pages in. I have my Partier's bookmark for Escape the Readathon currently. And yeah, I, I'm hopeful that this is the dragon vlog where I love the books. Fourth Wing also comes today, and I don't know, I thought I was going to drop whatever I read to read Fourth Wing, but I don't think I can drop this right now. So hopefully I can finish it soon so that I can start Fourth Wing. And I'm, I'm just, I'm very excited. Like, this... This is so good right now. Like I am, I love the blind rep too. Like obviously it is a magical dragon that is blind and he learns things in somewhat of a magical way at times, but there's also a decent amount of representation with like talking about like how sounds are different based on things. And I so far have really enjoyed the representation in the story. I'll keep you updated in a bit. Um, hello. It is Tuesday night. I have a, a prairie fairy local. And I have an unboxing and my mom is watching me do this and it's kind of weird. <laughs> Don't you dare knock that over. Um, but this is obviously going to be fourth wing and I'm super excited for it. It is a first edition from the publisher and they just did like it fancy, but like it was the same price as normally. So I obviously had to do it. It's so pretty because look at those edges. Can you focus on them? Like there's a dragon on the edge. I'm gonna be reading this in like a day. I've been just waiting for it to get here all day, but I wanted to show you how pretty this first edition is and it has like a really pretty map. And it is just like the regular hardcover right now. Eventually it won't be like this, so you have to get like the first edition printing, but see you guys soon. Hello. I am, I think 70-ish percent, maybe more like 65% in. I'm on page 310 out of like 540. Oh, there's something in my eyeball. Oh my god. And this book started out really strong for me, and then it kind of flopped a little bit, but it's going back to being stronger. The middle section of this book is just a lot of like journeying. Think Aragon, like literally, like if you've read Aragon, think Aragon, and that part of them just like experiencing life together now as like a bonded pair and like growing their magic and like getting better at that. So there were things happening, but I just think that like I'm not a journey reader, like I just, I'm not, I'm not someone who really enjoys long journeys. So it just like, 
went a little bit too long for me to a point that I was like, okay, can we just get where we're going? And I kind of wasn't as interested during those, like, I would say probably like a good like 150 pages maybe but now that we're like past I feel like the journey I think we're past at least because like some some action just happened I'm intrigued again and I'm really liking it so I do think that will stop this book from being a five star for me those those 150 pages of like journeying but I'm still thinking it's gonna be a four at this point I really just enjoy the magic in this. I think it's really fun. I love, 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 love the addition of cooking in this. I think it's uh, so funny. And if I could go back, I would be reading this and doing a vlog where I was like eating things that were talked about in a book. Like he literally teaches you how to like make a steak in this. And I think it's hilarious. And then like the dragons like are very picky about their food and to determine like the dragon magic. It depends, like you just keep feeding them different types of meat and depending on what meat they like best, it, it'll tell you what magic type they are. And I just thought that was so funny. And like, just like, what an interesting addition to a story and like as someone who loves to cook i love eating good food i really enjoyed seeing what they were eating and i don't know i thought it was just like a fun element to the story and added something unique because i haven't seen it done a lot in that way like normally they're just eating like the boringest food and i mean they still are but like we're talking about like spicing things we're talking about like wild plants that we can eat and i don't know i found that was interesting but that could just be me and my like i like food i really 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 like food so yeah I'm I'm still enjoying this a lot but I did just want to talk about like the journeying aspect because that like wasn't my favorite part of the story I have another tab actually since last time and I just thought this line was really pretty uh, you are a rod of iron and I will beat you into steel and I I, I don't know I, I like those small little simple lines in this this writing style Okay, so I finished Ascendant and I ended up giving this book three stars. This is my favorite out of the Boy and His Dragon tropes that I have read. I've read a few now. So I've read of Blood and Fire, I've read Aragon, I've read Dragon Mage, and I feel like I'm missing one other one that I've read, but I'm not entirely sure at this moment in time. And this one is definitely my favorite of the pack. I think it brings something new to this classic trope and classic tale because what I've learned from reading all of these Boy and His Dragon books is that the story is so similar. And it's why I think I don't like them because I feel like I've read it before and I want something new, I want something more modern than what that trope and that style of fantasy is giving me. But I do think that Ascendant does a really good job of bringing those ideas in. We have the representation of a blind dragon, which I thought was a really good addition to the story. We also have a really cool magic system and I really enjoyed the cooking aspects of this. But what really didn't do it for me in the end was all of the traveling. I just don't like traveling for the sake of traveling. Last time I checked in with you, I was saying I thought we were past the traveling part. We have an action scene and then we go right back to traveling and I feel like a majority of this book is just traveling which just didn't fully work for me and my experience but I do think that if you really like Aragon if you like the boy and his dragon trope this is good like this is enjoyable I think I will possibly continue on in the series. There is a second book and the third book comes out like soon because like I am interested to see. I loved the personalities of some of the dragons. We have a sassy dragon, which I really always enjoy. Interested in where the story is going, even though like the overall just like trope Ness of this like this type of story just doesn't work for me and I think I've learned that throughout doing this dragon vlog thing is that I do not enjoy the boy and his dragon trope but if you do please pick this up it's a really fun experience and I really liked the audiobook and it's indie so it deserves way more love than it gets and I really hope that a lot more of you pick it up on to the next book Hi. Hello. I am six chapters into Fourth Wing and I am honestly kind of obsessed. Um, I'm not sure why this is working for me. It probably shouldn't work for me. It reads very YA. I think there's going to be a love triangle. The romance is like very prominent, but 
I'm really kind of obsessed with it. I'm eating it up. I'm loving just like the characters. It feels like I'm going to be addicted to this story. I also have been really enjoying the world building. I feel like our author has been very smart in the way she's done it. She did it earlier through like we had a panic character and to get her out of panicking she was like reciting facts she knew so we were learning like facts about the world through there. We're going to class. We're learning lessons that then give us more of a broader thinking of what's happening in the world through like the classes um yeah this is just so far really working for me and i'm loving it guys i've made myself an iced coffee at 10 o'clock at night because i don't think i'm sleeping tonight i'm squealing with excitement while reading this book like i don't know what has me right now but like fantasy romance and just like ya romance too in general just has me by a chokehold right now i'm in my fan row era uh, it's all I want to read and I'm literally obsessed with what's happening in here. Um, I think I'm just reading the right ones. I'm reading books that are still fantasy with plot that just have romance in them. Like so far I'm 135 pages in and we've had like tense moments and like banter. But like there's no like romance romance yet. But I know it's coming and I'm like I'm, I'm waiting for it. Like the build up is like chef's kiss. And I just, I don't think I'm sleeping tonight because I'm, I'm really obsessed. I, um, I wish I didn't have such a pretty copy because I want to write all over this thing. I love it. And like, there's such a funny humor to this even. Um, yeah, I'm obsessed. See you in the morning. Well, I'll probably see you in a couple hours when I have more thoughts. Apparently it's dark outside now and Flash is on. We've met the dragons. <laughs> and I'm so obsessed. I'm gonna have one hell of a time picking my favorite reads this year. That top 10 list, I think it's gonna be like a top 20. Like what, how, how can I exist in this many favorites? <laughs> this is so freaking good. I truthfully don't think that I'm making it to my real camera. All of these updates have been on my phone because I'm just so invested that I can't bring myself to like set up my camera to record a real update for you i'm on page 200 um obsessed still uh the my one complaint about this book sorry mickey's here come here my one complaint about this book is that i do think it's moving a little too fast i kind of wish it was a little bit slower but that complaint is so minor in the sea of things because like this is easily five stars for me um and I am just really enjoying my time with it regardless of that, but that it is really fast paced. So if you don't like fast paced, it might not be for you, but like I'm, oh, also another complaint is that I wish the like side characters were a little bit better, but I'm so invested in the main characters that that doesn't bother me that much. But like if I wasn't as invested in the main characters, the side characters would bother me, but still five stars. <laughs> I look like a mess. It didn't actually take me that long. It's only 4 a.m. And I just finished Fourth Wing. And I I just need the next book ASAP. This is why I hate reading new releases. What am I supposed to do until a new book comes out? Um, That was a five star. And I will talk to you about it tomorrow when I'm put together and I'm not tired as F. I'm outside, so there's probably going to be noises, and I hope you can forgive me, but it's so beautiful. It is, I think, like 30 degrees out today, and like 30 degrees in May, start of May where I'm from, is not... We do get up to this weather eventually, but just like not normally like right now. I have a big giant plate of watermelon. I'm going to do some work outside and read a little bit. I need to update you on things. I started and completed Fourth Wing last night, as you guys saw in my clips. I was obsessed with it from the very beginning. A lot of other people took a lot of time to warm up to it, but for me, something about this worked from the get-go. I'm gonna say it reminds me of Serpent in the Wings of Night and Fireborn put together. It's like they had a little baby because we have the setting from Fireborn. So we have the school academy, we have dragon riders, but we have the banter and the romance from Serpent of the Wings at Night. And both of these are contenders for favorite book of the year and clearly Fourth Wing is too. If you're not aware, Fourth Wing is a book about a school for dragon riders. It is a military academy that when you conscript into it, you either die or you pass. And there is no other way out. <laughs> 
when her, our main character's mom, who's actually the leader of the military, voluntells her that she has to conscript into the military regime instead of becoming a scribe like she had been training her whole life to be. She really doesn't want to do this. Like she's very different than the rest of her family and she doesn't want to do it, but she's not given a choice. So she just has to try her hardest to survive. We have someone who has a chronic illness. Her ligaments are fragile. Like she bends and she breaks a lot. And the author also has, um, uh, she has, connective tissue disorder the author it's in her acknowledgments and she definitely writes that representation into the story and I really liked that I liked that it didn't just go away the uh, troubles she had didn't just magically disappear when she bonded with the dragon she had to work hard and show perseverance and I felt like show that she can do what they can do regardless of her disability I don't know I just I really enjoyed the story I found her main character very compelling if you've watched my top 10 favorite fantasy series list. She is a younger protagonist who is proving the world wrong. And that is like the be all end all for me and female characters. I love that type of character. I love someone who is going to tell you that, you, that you're wrong and she can do it regardless of what you think, what you feel, what you say. She's going to prove you wrong. She's going to prove the odds wrong. And um, that's what she, she is. And then our love interest also, he... He was everything I could have wanted. I'm a very strong believer in relationships that don't be with someone who doesn't believe in you. And I think that really showed in this story through both the men, because there is a bit of a love triangle, but I don't really think it's a love triangle. I don't know. I don't think it should scare you off because I don't think it's written in the way like Twilight is. But I... I'm just really obsessed with this. Like, this was so good. Like, I stayed up till 4 a.m. 4 a.m. I started at, like, 4 p.m. I, like, literally read this for 12 hours straight just to finish it. I'm dying a little bit today. Not gonna lie. Like, I feel like I drunk a gallon of tequila. Like, I feel so hungover from just, like, the adrenaline spike this book gave me and then not sleeping. I will be highly recommending this again and again and again. I've now learned from these dragon vlogs, if you put people into a school academy, throw in some dragons, maybe a little bit of a rebellion and a romance, I will stay up all night reading them because I did it with Fury Song, which is the second book in this series. And I did it with Fourth Wing. And apparently that is like my favorite type of book. So if you have any school academy dragon rider rebellion stories, please let me know. Honestly, I just think School Academy really works for me, but I really love the personality of the dragons in Fourth Wing. I think that was something I missed a little bit in Fireborn, where this one has a little bit of the sassy, sarcastic personalities that dragons are known for in fantasy tales. Yeah, I don't know. I'm obsessed with this. I've been talking about it for a really long time already. Um, this book feels YA in many ways to me, but it does get spicy at times. Like it is a fantasy romance, but it does have a bit of a juvenile writing style, but that's something that really worked for me. I think it's the perfect blend of YA characters that I love and obsess with, those compelling characters that are written in such a addicting way with the spice level and themes that I enjoy in my adult books. Um, so yeah, these three... I was not expecting any of these to be favorites, and they are. Nick always makes fun of me for salting my watermelon, but it tastes delicious. And if you've never done it, salt literally just brings out the flavor of your food, and it's incredible. Nothing better than watermelon on a hot day, personally. Well, maybe one thing better, and it's my iced coffee that's behind you guys, because I'm so freaking tired. I have news and I don't think I'm prepared to share the news. I'm, I am DNFing in the shadow of the gods. Hear me out. Okay, hear me out. Please don't just like leave my channel. Do not unsubscribe. I plan on giving this a go at another point in my, oh my god. That's rain. Can you hear that? Hallelujah. If you don't know, Alberta, which is where I live, has been under a emergency alert. Like we have literally called a state of an emergency because we are having insane, insane wildfires right now. 
And so we've all just been waiting for the rain to come. It keeps saying that it's going to rain and then it's not. But that sounds like it's pouring out there, which is so good. We've had, I think like Saturday, we had 110 active wildfires with 40 of those being out of control within my province. So we definitely needed this rain. And I hope it's not ruining the clip, but you're probably gonna hear it and it's just gonna add atmosphere now. But I wanna try this book later on in my bookish journey. I think at the moment in time where my reading headspace is at, I am not looking for the complexities within this world. I am on page 169 and I found myself very bored. And most of that is because I'm just looking right now for the types of reads that the characters are so gripping. I'm not necessarily looking right at this current moment for an expansive world. And that's what this is. This has like the coolest world, the coolest expansiveness, and it is complicated. Like there are a lot of names to remember. If you're not paying attention, you will miss things. And I just found that's what I was doing. I was missing a lot of things. I wasn't enjoying my time with it. I was bored. And I think it's a me thing, not the book thing. And so in this vlog, I am DNFing this book, but it is staying on my shelf to try again at some point in the future because I think it deserves a lot of love and I, I like what it's doing, but at this moment in time, the characters aren't doing it for me. Which when I read Malice, the characters automatically got me. Like I was obsessed with Corbin and his sister from page one and I'm struggling a lot with the characters in this one. And I, from what I've heard in like the universe of booktube and the bookish sphere, people think the characters are better done in this one. So like, I think it's a me thing, not a book thing, but that doesn't mean I am DNFing the last book. And um, that means in every single dragon vlog I've done so far, I've DNF'd at least one book. I don't know what that says about me. And there we go, we've come to the end of this vlog. So here are some of my wrap up thoughts. This is the third time I've done the dragon vlogs for you. And in every single vlog, my favorite has been the YA new adult story, the younger audience story, the one with the younger protagonists and it reads for a younger audience. This is definitely new adult. There is a spicy scene in it. This seems, this is a real good spicy scene. I wonder if for me, there's something about the concept of dragons, which are these older immortal characters and beings that adds some sort of like nuance to the story for a YA story. It adds like a mentor relationship. It adds someone who is looking out for you and is wiser than you but also in most of these, they're bonded dragons. And so the dragons are there to like be your friend, not be your mentor. I don't know. I'm just like letting my brain explore why maybe I'm finding the YA shifting stories are working for me so much more. Or it could just be that I, in dragon stories particularly, I'm looking for characters that I love and connect with. Also in these younger stories, we typically have a female character. And that is something that is missing from most of the Born is Dragon stories, is that female character. And when I'm looking at a list of like my favorite books, pretty much every single book has a female protagonist of some sort. So I do think that I am missing that female perspective in Boy and His Dragon stories. That is why I maybe don't love them as much. A story doesn't have to be an only female cast, but I definitely do enjoy the perspective of a female character, which we are getting in a lot of the YA stories because a lot of them are written by women. As I said, this is not YA, this is definitely new adult, but it leans towards the younger audiences. And so like, that's what I'm classifying it as like age demographic. I would definitely say it goes like adult, adult to new adult, and then like new adult to young adult in terms of these. But there isn't like a strong correlation between like female authors because in the first vlog, Aragon was my favorite, which is written by a man, but we had two women authors in that vlog. We had Prayer of the Orange Tree and Dragon Mage, and I didn't like either of those. So it's not a correlation between female author and male author, which like there could be no correlation. Like I'm just pulling things out of my back pocket, out of my brain that I think kind of makes sense. But like, I could just like this book because I liked it and it was a good book. There doesn't have to be a correlation between everything, but I definitely do like to see some of those similarities. And as I said before, I think a school academy really works for me, which we get in both Fireborn and Fourth Wing and Fireborn was my favorite last time. We already discussed earlier how I just don't think the boy and his dragon trope is really a trope for me. I don't think I like these stories. I will say I think I will be avoiding these stories in the future other than the continuations of series I'm already working on. But I definitely think it's a dragon choice, a dragon story that does not work for me. 
and that's fine. Sadly, this was just like wrong time for me and I really hope I love it when I pick it up later, but I wonder if there is a correlation between me wanting simpler dragon stories. I'm not entirely sure, like that has not been tested at all, um, but Aragon, Fireborn, and Fourth Wing are all, I would say, simpler stories. Yeah, I think that's all the, the discussions I have on this journey. In the end, they were ranked Fourth Wing Ascendant and the Shadow of the Gods. I'm calling this the most successful dragon vlog we've had because I had a five star and a three star that I quite enjoyed. And then I had a DNF, but like a soft DNF where I think every other time has been more of a hard DNF. And I definitely, this one is way more successful than the last one where I DNF'd two of the books, even though I had an all time favorite in that vlog, I DNF'd the two other books. So I'm excited to see what happens in the next installment of these. I have no idea what I'm picking for myself. I'm gonna have to go look at that list again and figure that out. And I'm just, I'm kind of scared of it, but I'm also excited. I just love dragons. And even though I'm learning that I don't actually love dragons, I love them in theory, but I don't always love them in books, I'm still always excited when a new dragon book comes out and I get to pick it up. Anyways, if you made it all the way to the end of this video and you'd like to leave me an emoji just to say you were here, leave me some sort of cloud emoji because there's clouds on this cover. If you have any other recommendations for dragon books, let me know down below. I'm always looking for more so that I can continue doing this series for you guys. And then if you'd like to connect with me on other platforms, my bookstagram, my book Twitter, my Goodreads, and my Patreon are all linked in the description bar below. Have yourselves an absolutely remarkable day.